After the recent debates about a potential wobbling ban, I thought it would be a good idea to try and figure out how wobbling affects the current metagame. I will be focusing on the top level and majors, not local, since I think it affects the two in vastly different ways. The impact of wobbling varies wildly by matchup. The impact it'll have on fast fallers and semi floaties like Marth and Sheik is less than the impact it has on floaty matchups. The Ice Climbers have a pretty solid punish game on these non floaties, and thus would still probably be able to beat them, but with less consistency. The floaties, on the other hand, particularly Samus and Puff, would become near impossible to win with any kind of regularity. This is because the Ice Climbers punish game on these characters is severely limited, consisting of either very RNG based handoff combos or of simple throw to aerials or smash attacks. This would be an especially huge issue in the Puff matchup, where Puff can now go for rest at low percents with very little risk to it. At most, the Ice Climbers can get 40-ish percent off of a punish here, and that is being generous. The Samus matchup would probably become very problematic as well, since the only reason it is doable is because of how much the match can pivot off of a single grab punish. Without this ability, it becomes very challenging for the Ice Climbers, since Samus can take out Nana pretty easily with missiles. The Peach matchup is one where a wobbling band could go either way as to how much effect it has on the matchup. On one hand, the climbers do have a super solid punish game on Peach, even without wobbling. They also do not rely on grabs as much in this matchup as they do in others, since Peach is so safe that you generally won't get many grabs anyways. The matchup is also so bad to begin with that a wobbling ban might be the straw that breaks the camel's back and makes the matchup entirely unwinnable for the climbers. It has historically been so weak for the climbers that several players have picked up secondaries to deal with Peach, most notably Chew Dad going Jigglypuff against Muta King at Dreamhack Austin. Wobbling is really what gives Ice Climbers a shot against the floatier characters in the metagame, and without it, several matchups would go from slightly unfavored for the Ices to near impossible. Logically, then, it would seem as though a wobbling ban would be the death for every solo Ices main wanting to get consistent results, and thus bring in a new era of Ices mains with the secondary for floatier matchups. This might mean we will see more of characters like Puff, Young Link, Peach, or other characters that are relatively easy to secondary while doing pretty well against the floaties. This will probably lead to slower matchups and more timeouts, as floaty dittos generally tends to have. Results wise, the Ice Climbers have been doing pretty well for themselves in the recent times as well. Big House 8 had 9 Ice Climbers in the top 64, with Bananas even making it to 5th place by beating Plup and Huggins in 3 0s and clutching out a game 5 set against Fiction. Hey, yo, is he about to two stock my man? Dash attack to re grab. With Sopo! Oh! Yo, the read! The read! What is going on? Yo, he's out. He's actually just out playing him. Like, legit. But he's taking the last but, two. Yeah. Look how much damage he's done with Sopo! <laughs> Yo! Oh, bro! He just beat him with Sopo! He beat him with Sopo! <laughs> he straight up just beat him with Sopo! Who is known for being incredibly strong in the matchup. Before Big House, both Army and Bananas have also made very notable finishes at Low Tier City 6, Dreamhack Austin, and Smashcom. While we'd like to think we hold our tournaments to figure out who is the best player in the community and to reward these players, as Melee grows as an esport, we should take into consideration the spectator experience. Someone new to watching competitive Melee will probably find Wobbling less interesting to watch than the flashier combos of a Captain Falcon or a Falco can perform. There are ways to mitigate this effect, however. A Wobble grants the commentators valuable time to talk about other things than direct play-by-play, -play, meaning that you can add to the viewer experience by talking about things like history of the players, the setup that was used, how the player getting wobbled can adapt to the neutral of the Ice Climbers, etc. Alright, I, I get to nerd out about Ice Climbers now. This means that newer viewers can get a more solid grasp of the matchup and the players they're watching. Commentators can add a ton of entertainment and educational value in the 10 to 12 seconds it takes to wobble somebody. While wobbling is one of the more controversial mechanics in the current melee metagame, the general consensus is that the Ice Climbers are a relatively bad and exploitable character, even with wobbling allowed. What do you think about this matchup as a whole? Uh, I think Marth will obliterate I think Marth destroyed them. I think definitely yeah, yeah. Marth wins, but it's not, you gotta, you gotta be on point, you can't like slip up. Well I feel basically. like every, all the good characters destroy Ice Climbers. Most top players also think that wobbling should still be allowed, but there are a few outliers. None in particular has been pretty vocal about his dislike of the mechanic, culminating with him tweeting about being wobbled while it was happening at Don't Park on the Grass 2016, and quitting out mid-match against this kid Boogie. Alright, now I'm checking Twitter, tweet at him. <laughs> wow, my man is on social media right now. He's like, I can't believe this guy. Yeah, see what he sent out. I'm getting wobbled in my favorite game, what do I do? Wow, <laughs> in real time. Really? In oh real my time. God. He definitely tweeted. <laughs> Other top players like Leffen have more favorable opinions on the mechanic. With Wobbling Ban, there are two ways the counter Ice Climber meta could go. 
Either it will get much campier or it will become much less campy. Since the Ice Climber will lose their strongest punish tool, they will have much less counterplay to camping as a single grab will no longer turn a match in their favor like it has with Wobbling Cloud. This means that getting the first stock against them can almost guarantee you a game win if you're willing to play the timer. This is especially true for characters like Peach and Puff as they are very good at camping out the Ice Climbers and even if the Climbers get in, they can't combo them as well as they can on a fast faller. The flip side of the coin is that with Wobbling Band, there will be much less risk in going in constantly and thus people might be more inclined to play much more aggressively against the Climbers. This this is probably the best outcome for everybody if Wobbling was to be banned. It would be better for non icy players, as camping for 6 plus minutes feels more like a chore than it does playing a video game. It would be better for the icy players, since being camped for 6 plus minutes is agonizingly boring. It'd be better for the stream viewers for obvious reasons. And lastly, it would be better for TOs who wouldn't have to deal with 20 plus minutes best of threes holding up brackets. Arguably one of the stronger sides of Wobbling is not necessarily just the ability to take a stock off of the opponent, but Wobbling's ability to put the opponent on tilt so they Start playing worse. This is a common trait of grapplers in general, not just in melee but also in other FGC games like Street Fighter. Tournaments set with ICs often hinge on the climbers being able to tilt their opponents, so they start to either go for risky, predictable, and punishable approaches, or the opponents start making tech skill errors. This is a particularly big factor in spacey matchups, which rely heavily on precise inputs. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to see more content in the future. If you're interested, I also have a Twitch link in the description.